God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. He made faith the ground standard because every Christian should have faith. But he began to talk about their own faithfulness. And he said concerning Abel, he said he gave a more excellent sacrifice. So Abel, God could trust him. Everything God gave him, he brought it back to honor God. Whereas Cain could not. So it was his faithfulness on the altar of sacrifice that made him become an elder. When he spoke about Abraham, he spoke about Abraham's obedience. When God told him to get out of his country, he was able to abandon his nation, abandon his kindred, abandon his family, and he was going to a land. He didn't even know that land. But he was going everywhere God would direct him. And the Bible said he moved from city to city, dwelling in tents with his son Isaac and Jacob. So he was able to believe God. When the Bible spoke about Noah, it said when God spoke to Noah, Noah moved with fear. He had fear for God. So it was their level of submission to the authority of God that made them become elders. And so on the strength of that, God was able to commit secrets to them. That's why I said, the secrets of the Lord, they are not with those who study. They are with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. And so the first thing that makes a man an elder is the degree of faithfulness that God can find in him in addition to his faith in God. So much so that God can commit the secrets of God to him. And if you study that scripture in Revelation chapter 5, when John came to heaven, John was crying. Because even in heaven, people cry. He said, I saw a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And he said, no man was found worthy to open the book. And John began to weep. Suddenly, he said, one of the elders came to him. Meanwhile, before the elder came, there was a strong angel that told him, there's no hope for humankind. So you can be strong and not be an elder. You can raise the dead and not be an elder. One of the strong angels told him, there's no hope. But an elder came and said, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed. What the angel didn't know presently, an elder knew in the past. Because in their realm, they are keepers of secrets. They are the custodians of God. An elder is a custodian. A custodian of the secrets of God. I'm talking about spiritual ranking system. That even among men, what will make a man have authority with God are the kinds of secrets God can commit to him. God whispers something to you. The life of somebody depended on it. But you want to prove you are, that you are, you want to get validation. And you came to say what you shouldn't say. And somebody became a victim. You are gifted, but you are not an elder. God can't entrust anything to you because you are not an elder. And he didn't stop there. The second thing that made us to understand who an elder is, is the fact that they have intimacy with God. He said, I write unto you, children, 1 John 2, 12, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong, the word of the Lord abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Every time he mentioned fathers, it was constant. You have known him that is from the beginning. So, eldership and fatherhood in the spirit, which is what qualifies men to become thrones, is the degree of intimacy they have with God and the level of secrets God commits to them. And so, among men, that is the prerequisite, and among spirits, that is the prerequisite, because the earth mirrors the spiritual. So, when Paul was talking about the elders, the thrones in the spirit, he was referring to the ones who have the secrets of God and the ones who have intimacy with God. And this is why God doesn't send elders. They are not angels. The word angel is the word angelos. It means a sent one. The elders sit on thrones with God. Their job is to worship him 
day and night because they are traveling only in intimacy so they co rule with god that's why god gave them thrones so in the spirit the first order of men you will meet are thrones the second order of creatures in the spirit realm are called dominions dominions now the illustration i made earlier is not to say elders among men have thrones in heaven that's a different economy altogether but i'm just using the physical to explain the supernatural that in the spirit these ones also are custodian of knowledge that's why what a strong angel did not know in revelation 5 an elder knew and that's why they worship god night and day because it's about secret and intimacy that's what confers eldership after all in that realm there's no time so you can't say an elder is the person who lives oldest there's no time there so it's not about chronology it's about another economy that is deeper than chronology the second category of creatures you will find are called dominions according to colossians 1 15. a dominion is a prince also but the difference between a prince who is a dominion and a prince who is a throne is that a prince who is a dominion god gives him a territory to watch over on his behalf so when god creates a dominion what it does is that he opens another civilization and he makes that dominion the lord over that civilization in the spirit there were many beings that were dominions in the spirit realm there were many beings that were dominions before the earth was destroyed lucifer was the dominion over the earth realm because he was the one who kept guard over the earth but there was judgment on the earth and that's why genesis 1 verse 1 they say in the beginning god created the earth and the heavens and the earth and he suddenly said the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep there was somebody who was guarding the first earth but judgment was passed and the first earth was destroyed and so god recreated the second earth now when god created the second earth and created another creature called man and put him in that earth there was something god gave him he gave him dominion because the dominion is god's ambassador representing his interest in another territory his goal is to make that territory to become like heaven so that when you enter that territory you will see god's government there and so when god created man the rank where god placed man is the rank of a dominion that's why genesis 1 28 he said let them have dominion it is from the realm of dominion that civilizations are born if there is no dominion there will be no civilization because every time god creates a new sphere he needs a functionary to man it for him and so the functionaries god send to man his territories are called dominions in the heavens lucifer had authority over one third of the angels because he was a dominion he was a custodian over a territory so there were angels working with him and when he fell he fell with one third of the angels of god he was a dominion he had authority over territories if you send your ambassador from zambia to america the embassy where that ambassador stays even though it's in american soil is not in america that embassy is called zambia no matter what happens the american police can't enter that embassy if a zambian commits an offense and they don't catch him and he jumps the fence and enter that embassy they can't touch him again no matter what happens if they touch him they violate bilateral relationship because that territory even though it's in america it is perceived as being in zambia if you cross it you have declared war and so that ambassador is actually not in america he's in zambia in america because where he's occupying is the territory of zambia so the ambassador is a dominion from zambia the ambassador is what a dominion from zambia because he keeps the territorial integrity of the portion of land of zambia in america so when god created man the reason he gave him the earth he said the heavens belong to god he said but the earth has he given to the sons of men is because this jurisdiction now 
is God's territory, but man is the ambassador that represents God here. So man is a dominion. This is why the Bible said in Psalm 8 from verse 2 to 4 that man is higher than angels because angels are messengers. They don't have authority over territories. They run errands. But in the ranking system of God, we are custodians over territories. And there are also angels who are dominions. When Lucifer came to contend for the body of Moses, the Bible said Michael did not bring any railing accusation against him. He just said, the Lord rebuke you. And he went further. He said, there are men who have no regard for entities and dominion. The word dominion is the word curiotes. It means a prince that is allocated a territory to watch on the behalf of God. And so in the realm of God, you have thrones, you have dominions. And then the third category you have are called principalities. Principalities means come first. So every time God loses a territory or God wants to reclaim a territory, he doesn't send the dominion because the dominion is already watching over a territory. So what it does is that there are other princes God sends to go and win territories. Those princes that go first to win a territory before God brings his government are the ones that are called principalities. That's why they call, they come first. So if a local government, for example, is under attack in Zambia, maybe rebels came and took a local government and the federal government wants that local government back, they can mobilize a general in the army and give him marching orders to send the troops to that local government to disconfit the rebels and to reclaim the land. That general that is sent to go and take that territory is called a principality. He will not be the one to sit there as the governor, but he's the one who goes to win the territory. When he wins that territory, then a governor is appointed to sit because the general has authority to fight, but he doesn't have governmental intelligence. He can't bring administration. He was created to fight, but he doesn't have leadership. If you make him the governor there, he will become a tyrant. And he may start killing Zambia too. Because it's his way to fight. But it's not his way to lead. So when he's sent to that territory as a principality, he wins the territory. When the territory is won, then the president will appoint a governor over that territory. The governor is a dominion. The general is a principality. I'm, I'm trying to show you how spiritual cities are built. So you have thrones that sit with God and co-rule with God. Then you have dominions who are governors or ambassadors of God that watches over God's territories. And then you have principalities that God sends in order to take territories. That's why every time principality is mentioned, they must add and powers. Because the principality cannot work without power. Because he's a warrior, he's a fighter, he fights. Most of the archangels are principalities. When they show up, they take over. Every time territory is in contention, principalities are sent. When a territory is won, a dominion takes over. And the dominion reports to God through the thrones. That's how the structure works. And so when Paul was talking to us in Colossians chapter 12, he was bringing us intelligence on how spiritual structures are formed. But you see, the problem is that this thing does not only happen in light, it also happens in darkness. So in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand the wiles of the devil. And he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, when you are born again, you need to understand that there's a difference. A demon does not fight with you. And the reason is simple. A demon does not have a stake over a territory. A demon looks for people to possess. He hides in them and carries out the agenda of the devil. When you meet a demon, you cast the demon out. In the name of Jesus, get out. If you meet a principality and say in the name of Jesus, he will ask you, who are you?
I'm showing you how power works because people don't know. People don't know. A principality met Jesus when Jesus was fasting and he waited for Jesus to fast for 40 days and 40 nights when Jesus was most anointed. And the principality met him and said, If you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. You don't cast out a principality. He's not possessing anybody. He's a fallen angel. He has his own garment. You cast a demon out because he doesn't have a body. He's borrowing somebody else's body. A principality has his own body. He said even Satan himself can change himself to the angel of light. He has his own body. So where are you casting him from? A principality doesn't fight to possess men. He fights to possess territories. So he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and power. So the order was reversed. Because the principalities and powers, they are the ones who enter a territory to possess it. When they possess it, then the rulers of the darkness of this world now comes. The rulers, the word rulers in that scripture is the word magistrate. So the principality can enter Zambia and he wants to take over Zambia. But he knows that you who are men, you are the ones who have authority over Zambia. So what he will do is that he will infiltrate you the way he infiltrated Adam in the Garden of Eden. And so he will look for those who are prophetic because he knows they see and they hear. And he will want to corrupt them so that they will begin to compromise. Because the power you have in the spirit is the degree of your purity and the degree of your loyalty to the government of God. This one is government. It's not just in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It is your purity and your loyalty to the government of God. And so when the principality comes, he looks for those who are prophets. And he begins to, to show them fair ladies. Meanwhile, he would have sent the demons to corrupt the fair ladies. And the fair lady is opening her lap, opening her cleavages. She doesn't know she's a messenger. Because spirit cities are about to be built. And he knows that the prophet is vulnerable to the woman. Because the weakness of the prophet is his eyes. Just as his strength is his eyes. And that's why prophets must win the battle of immorality. <laughs> prophets must win the battle of immorality in order to bring government. You will see why a prophet can call a name and a phone number, but he has no power in that territory. In fact, himself will be a thief. Himself will be a liar. Because he doesn't understand that it's a spirit city. It's a spirit city. And so they will send the demons. And the demons will enter the women and enter the men. Some of the men will spend hours in the gym. When they build their chest, they now wear singlet. <laughs> I'm showing you something. The ladies who are prophetess, they will be swindled by those men because of their looks. And the men who are prophets, they will be swindled by those women because of their lap and their breasts. What they don't know is that a program is going on. A program. You, you sent a message. You, sent a, you, you came somewhere to preach. And you connected with the sister. You gave her a word of knowledge. And you said, see me later. I need to impart you. It's a lie. Every impartation you want to give her, give her dear now. You didn't hear this. You didn't impart her. When you were under the anointing, is it when the anointing leaves from you, you want to go and impart her in the office? It's a program. Now, hear this. Even the lady in question knows that the prophet is liking her. But a demon is already manipulating her. And instead of running, she goes like a sheep. Gullible. And then the same prophet is thinking he's smart. And he collects her number, sends her a message and then arranges to meet her in the hotel. Both of them think they are smart, but they are puppets. They are part of a complex spiritual program that is being manipulated by a principality. A principality is about to win the territory. And you see, in one year, 40 genuine prophets fall. And because they have fallen, the quorum that they are supposed to create in the spirit that principality will now take it and become the owner of that portion of the ecclesia. Every time those prophets minister, 
they no longer minister from God's frequency. They communicate the energy of that principality. And so, the more those prophets preach, the more the principalities will take over. So even innocent believers who hear them will discover a prophet prophesy to them and they start fornicating. And they don't know why. Because the prophet is not speaking the counsel of God. He's emitting the energy of a seductive spirit. And so the principality will continue. He will go to the politician and show him deals where he can make money. And the politician falls to the chain of corruption and begins to steal what he should provide for the people. And you take money from Zambia. See how stupid it is. You take money from Zambia. You go and buy a house in the United States that you visit three times in a year. Even if you are a thief, wouldn't you be wise? Why not build the house in Zambia? The house in the United States, they are taxing you. Taxing you every month, but you still build there. They steal money from here. They go and invest in Dubai. Why not bring the same business to Zambia? But a prince is involved. And that prince uses corruption to create poverty. Because even that poverty is a system. Because the guys who are stealing, they are stealing because of hunger. They are stealing because of frustration. The young ladies who are prostitutes, they are prostitutes because of, of hunger and poverty. So the principality uses the politician who has governmental power to loot money from the country and send the money out of the country creating a poverty system in the land and then the young generation who should be the future growing their potential now turn to vices in order to survive at the end of the day a spiritual atmosphere is created so you have those who are fornicators you have those who are liars you have those who are corrupt government officials these are the atmosphere that allows the rulers of the darkness to come somebody says it's an apostle and he goes somewhere the moment the power of god is moving he forces everybody that they must give money because he's a merchant a merchant he's a thief on the altar he doesn't know he's creating atmosphere for spirits to take over when those atmospheres are created the principalities know that if something is not done quickly god can send intervention so they will report back to the rulers of the darkness the rulers of the darkness will now come the work they do is to write laws and so what they will do is to make sure those laws become cultures among men and so you will know that before you become a government official you must bribe if you don't bribe you can never become it's a law a ruler has written that law the people can tell you this person is a good man but he can never become the leader because there's a law if you must become you must become corrupt because that law will make sure that's what the rulers do they are magistrates they are the ones who bound people in captivity for aeons and so you come to certain family the grandfather fornicated or went to cheat on his wife the ruler now make it a law and so even the father we have an extramarital affair the son we have an extramarital affair and you see patterns begin to repeat from one generation to another the principality created it the ruler made it a law now when you continue in that law for a long time then spiritual wickedness come that's where hiv appear from because those ones they come to afflict people because you have come to the end of the ladder so that you will meet death and destruction and so the power we are talking about here is not just the power to profess her. names and phone number it's not just the power to lay hands on the sick and they recover those things are good but we are talking about power that have the ability to reset a civilization so that when three of you rise zambia can be reprogrammed because something will come out of you this kind of power is a deep order of power you must travel to the spirit to possess it yourself Hallelujah. 
Recently, in my country, we just had an election, and for the first time, a righteous man rose. A righteous man. Every time he speaks, he said, Go and check my record. And they traced him. There was not one case of bribe. He never took money from anybody. When he left government, he paid everybody. Contractors, workers alike. Everybody paid. They never found anything against him. The whole nation rose as though a revolution was about to begin. But you see, magistrates had written laws that before you become a ruler, you must be corrupt. And he refused to be corrupt. When they saw that the power of God was tearing the hearts of the young people and something was about to begin, the report we got from the observers was that the rigging this time was not by thoughts. It was systemic. Even Einek was guilty. Einek. And this is not what Nigerians said. This is what observers said. That Einek did not follow their own regulation. So they had to use one way or the other. Corruption must come in. And when the INEC chairman was doing what was wrong and they asked him, he said, go to court. Because he knows that the court is compromised. Because this is a law. It will take a kind of power to break it. Miracle service don't affect this one. This one, there are guardians in the spirit who are watching over it. The kind of power we are talking about is the power that brings about national emancipation. This is the kind of power that men like Moses had. It's not just about healing blind eyes that one man can enter Egypt and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. And one man can bring down a civilization. That kind of power is no longer in the body of Christ. One man. Egypt was the strongest civilization in the world. God didn't send an army. He sent one man. And the man didn't come with battalions. He came with a staff. A staff. He entered Egypt with a staff and delivered people who were in captivity for 400 years. A captivity that is more ancient than himself. The captivity was older than him, but he came with a power that is ancient. With a staff, he brought down Egypt. When Moses spoke, his voice was like the voice of God. But there is a protocol. This is the power we want to study tonight. We don't have time. We don't have time. Sit down. Sit down. Let me try. studied history you will know that Pharaoh is called a god kings those days it's not like the what we call now president in those days a king is like a god if a king wants to celebrate his birthday sometimes they take three months because one king can have 120 provinces that is countries one king they were that powerful powerful when a king wants to enlarge the coast of his dynasty, he will go to a nation, he will win that nation, carry everybody from that nation, bring them to become slaves in his own land. This is how powerful they were. So when Moses entered Egypt, it's not something you can imagine. And Pharaoh 
did not even dare to want to arrest him because of the weight of glory he came with in fact in exodus chapter 7 verse 1 god said i have made you a god moses was not a prophet he was a god he said i have made you a god unto pharaoh there was a power the man carried nature respected him demons respected him kings respected him he was a government as an individual When we talk about the power of God, it's heavier than what we have seen. It's in the Old Testament you will see dimensions of power. Joshua can stand and tell the sun, stand still. The sun, the sun. It says, stand still. And he will tell the moon, don't move. And the sun and the moon will obey Joshua. That is the kind of power that our generation is looking for. If our generation don't tap into these kinds of power, then something will go wrong. The devil is having a few days because men of power no longer walk the landscape. 